Hello and welcome to Take Two, the programme that takes a look behind the news. I'm Ian Henshaw. First I've got a special guest here in the studio, Catherine Hamnett, who's been looking into the Fukushima disaster. And if you notice anybody running around on the floor, that's Arthur. Catherine, you've been looking into Fukushima. You've got a well-known as being somebody who's concerned about environmental issues. I mean, how bad is the Fukushima disaster, just to give us a general picture? Uh, unbelievably bad. Um, global catastrophe. Um, can I say more? Utterly underreported by the Japanese media, Japanese government clampdown, uh, betrayal of the Japanese people. Um, I don't know how bad it can, you know, how, ba how bad you could say, but starting off bad for Japan, um, if anything goes wrong with removing the fuel rods and the dilapidated and collapsing Pond 4 uh, cooling tower um, at the Daiichi plant, you could wipe out, it could wipe out the Northern Hemisphere. I mean, it's hard to say how bad it is. I mean, as it, even if that doesn't happen, it's belching out hundreds of gallons of radioactive water daily into the Pacific Ocean. Um, heading straight for the west coast of America um, and all the governments, the Japanese government, the Canadian government, the American government, the UK government are underplaying how severe this is. Um, this, this it's un unbelievable global cover-up that's going on right now. And you've identified the mechanism by which they do this as a secret or a very little known agreement? Well, yes. I mean, because everybody's, everybody's asking, like, why is this being underplayed? Why are yeah. the American government? And in actual fact, um, I think the nitty grit is um, there's a gagging order between the World, World Health, Health Organization, Organization and the International Atomic en Energy Agency dated um, May the 28th, 1959, which is about when all the Pacific testing started. Um, at the 12th World Health Assembly, the agreement states, whenever either organization proposes to initiate a program or activity on a subject in which the other organization has or may have a substantial interest, the first party should consult the other with a view to adjusting the matter by mutual agreement and continues, the IAEA and the WHO recognise that they may find it necessary to apply certain limitations for the safeguarding of confidential information furnished to them. They therefore agree that nothing in this agreement should be construed as requiring either of them to furnish such information as would, in the judgment of the other party possessing the information, interfere with the orderly contact of its operation. Which means that basically the WHO cannot release any information that would be regarded as damaging the interest of the IAEA. Yeah. And the IAEA's interest is the promotion of civil nuclear power energy. Totally, yeah. And so this actually, if you were wondering why... The WHO you know, the doesn't say anything about it. Yeah, and also our governments kowtow with this. I mean, for instance, like in the UK, we've had the Irish Sea, which has been the most nuclear polluted sea um, in the world before Fukushima. The British government was not testing or the um, environmental, uh, the Department of the Environment was not testing um, s uh, seafood. Yeah. It was, I mean, if it tests, it won't test residents, it'll test migrant like cod. Migrant so fish only tests. Migrant fish only. <laughs> Honestly. Um, uh, right now, America, you've got a direct current leading from, you know, from Japan. To, it's hitting the West Coast and it goes both ways along the West Coast of America. Um, you've got the Environmental Protection Agency, which is not testing seafood. Yeah, they've, they've got, stopped testing but, things, But you've they? got starfish collapse, you've got seal colonies, 98% um, of the young seals of this uh, recently have died. You've got lesions showing up on seals, on walruses, hair loss, polar bears, same thing. And Alaskan Airlines air crews with similar symptoms to polar bears. And the Alaskan Airlines are saying, oh, this is something that's been sprayed on their uniforms. Well, in a continent, this is for everything. 
why aren't they suing? Yeah. I mean, it's terrifying. The American courts are much more controlled than the peers. We did another well, story it's just, about it's this. Well, it's a clampdown that EPA is not testing. Yeah. It's still not testing seafood. Americans are eating seafood that hasn't been tested. I mean, there's a lot of nuclear scientists who are saying, you know, gone are the days that you'd eat anything from the Pacific. It's t it is extraordinary, isn't it? You've got some amazing um, information from Japan itself with the children clearing up oh, the contamination. It's unbelievable. They've got the children actually helping decontaminate their own playgrounds. You've got tots this high, you know, I mean, pff, dust, you know, playing in the up dust. and they were well, not playing in the dust helping decontaminate, then they've got nowhere to put it, so they're either digging holes in the playgrounds and burying it in the playgrounds, or leaving it in heaps in a corner. The children aren't allowed to play outside. There's a huge rise of obesity in children in the Fukushima area because they can't play outside. And at the same time, you've got a phenomenal rise in cancer, uh, thyroid cancer amongst children. Yes, you were mentioning this, now, and the local do the government won't collect the information. No, well, the government is collecting the information. I mean, it's official. You know, there's yeah. 57 children now that have got thyroid cancer out of a population of 300,000. Right. Yeah, but the, the, the normal rate of thyroid cancer in children is one in a million. So if you've got 150, if you've got 50 amongst 300,000, that means you've got, say, 150, 160. Yeah. In a million. So you've yeah. got 160 times, times the rate the of thyroid rate. cancer after two years. After just two years. And, and, and they're refusing to evacuate on. the children. They refuse, and they're actually forcing the, they've, s they've raised the safety limits on yeah. um, the radiation levels. And yet the IAEA itself admits that there's no safe level of radiation. All ra nuclear radiation is dangerous. Yeah. Um, they've raised the, the levels, they've stopped giving people benefits who have evacuated, they're forcing them back into the Fukushima prefecture. And then not only that, is that they're forcing the children, there's given financial incentives to the schools to feed children food that's grown in the, ar the, the area. in the area, and parents aren't allowed to give their children safe lunch <sighs> boxes on a pretext they might get food poisoning. If they're going to get food poisoning for their lunch boxes, then they get it food poisoning at home. Mm. And it's criminal. I mean, there's some of it which is about, you know, the Japanese have got the Olympics for 2020 instead of Madrid, but they got it on the insurance that they could decontaminate. They can't decontaminate. They've already admitted that they've got, they can't decontaminate the forest. Most of Japan is mountainous forest. They've got nowhere to put it. They've been dumping radioactive waste into Tokyo Bay. They've been... I mean, the worst thing that you could do with an radioactive waste is burn it. They've been burning it, and yeah. they've been shipping it all over Japan, and they've been burning it. Some people are saying, like the Japanese <laughs> are saying to me that they're trying to get radiation levels all over Even. Japan the same. But I mean, and then they'll say they're, they're not putting above everybody, average in Fukushima. <laughs> they're, they're putting everybody at risk. It's heartbreaking. It's absolutely heartbreaking. And now they've got a new law that journalists aren't allowed to report on radiation issues and there's severe penalties if they do. I mean, previously there would be demonstrations, you know, actors have come out and spoken out against the government policy because TEPCO, which is the Japanese electricity company mm. which owns the, d you know, is in charge of the nuclear plants, is now n pretty well nationalised because it nearly went bankrupt. Um, so it's owned by the Japanese government. I mean. Why are they doing it? It's criminal. I mean, there's accusations of genocide, mm. you know, rife in Japan. I mean, everything's getting taken down off the internet. Twelve school children tried to sue the Japanese government. The case was chucked out of court. Everything's taken down. They're off just the closing internet. ranks. They're closing ranks in the Japanese elite. But they've got to live there as well. It's an extraordinary case. I well mean, you're talking about burning the, the waste. I mean, that's like the Middle Ages. You know, getting a sort of druid or somebody to advise you. I mean, I mean, the, the idea that you can destroy things by burning them but died so at the beginning of the scientific but age. But it's so unscientific. Yeah. And the dumping waste into Tokyo Bay. And there's a video that we've seen of the mayor of Tokyo telling people, you know, anybody who objects, I say to them, shut up. Yeah. Well, they've got this new government that Roy Hunter has been telling us about on, um, on Take Two, and he's going to be on again soon. 
uh, and it's all part of this militarism uh, which the Americans are trying to revise. And well, I mean, you think is, okay, Pacific. going back to the IAEA, their interest is the promotion of civil nuclear, nuclear power. But civil nuclear power doesn't make any money. No. If you look at um, the Fre uh, French company who's now building our nuclear power stations. Um, EDF. EDF. They're 34 billion in debt mm. and they've got a further charge after a safety check post Fukushima on the state of their power stations, they've got another 10 billion. So unless they were part owned by the French government, you know, th you know, there's no company on earth that would survive with that yeah. level of debt. So what is behind this? And it's nuclear actually, weapons. it's nuclear weapons. Yeah. It's about nuclear weapons. But meanwhile, you've got, okay, so that's Japan wiped out, basically. Um, but you've got now America, who's poo-pooing any fears that their citizens may have. I mean, there was that recent video, mm. that I think, that I showed you of the guy going around this divine beach in San Francisco with a Geiger counter, and he finds that the radiation levels are five times the newly elevated norm. Which and has already a, been elevated. Yeah, That's it's been already main, been elevated. Their main countermeasure has been to elevate the level that they uh, call their sa risky. safety. Yeah. Sa their safety level, yeah. but again, as the IAEA is, is itself says, there's no safe level. Mm. So people are terrified. This actually, this video got four hundred thousand hits in a matter mm. of days. Mm. So I think there's rising panic in America. The pennies starting to drop yeah. because they've seen the sea lion deaths. Um, They've seen, you know, the herrings, are, you know, all the fish are coming in bleeding, the sockeye salmon is like hugely dropped. There's mm. all this evidence mounting up that's pointing at Fukushima. But um, the authorities are very poo-pooey about this video, they say, oh, well, we couldn't possibly be Fukushima. And yet, already, you know, previously they've predicted. Well, you can predicted. check these things have their signature. Of course, they have total Experts signature. Experts can check and they, you can trace signature. it back. There's no problem with it. But they're already trying to poo-poo it and say, oh, well, you know, it couldn't possibly be that. But the prediction was, that you know, it was going to start hitting in 2014. Here we are, yeah. and you know, there's waste, there's rubbish that's coming over, mm. you know, from the tsunamis already hitting the west coast. And then you've got 15 the 15 out of 15 tuna caught off the coast of California have got elevated levels of cesium. And then, of course, you've got this disastrous triple meltdown, which I, th I was quite on and amused on to hear the BBC on this. They said well, just they were so wrong. They yeah. actually denied that there'd been a meltdown yes. at all. Did you see that? And, yeah, and, that, and quite recently, somebody obviously decided to correct the record, and they mentioned that there had been, they said, contrary to uh, the original reports, there was actually a triple meltdown. What they didn't tell you was that it's their reports were the original ones that told us that there was wasn't a triple meltdown. So it's very you know odd, but then it's the British government, you know, super pro nuclear. I mean, well, I mean, I would love nuclear. I would adore it. You know, it's like, you know, what did Thatcher say? You know, free energy and how wonderful. I mean, if, if it if wasn't it was so true. dangerous, yeah. if it wasn't so dangerous, if the risk weren't so high. But this is showing that the risk of nuclear energy is too high. We should get out of nuclear energy now because this is one nuclear power station that's gone wrong. I mean, yeah. the predictions on in 10, I mean, Japan, the Pacific is Japan's dead. Japan's supposed to be an efficiently run, you know, when Chernobyl happened, people said, well, you know, that's the Russian Soviet Union, very inefficient, although actually the cleanup was very efficient. Yeah, but why Chernobyl. build it, why would we have all these nuclear reactors on fault lines, you know, in a country that was prone to earthquakes yeah, yeah, yeah. of a stupid design, like the yeah. Pond 4, yeah. you know, it's the cooling the cooling pond is 100 feet in the air. I mean, who designed these things? Yeah. I mean, half wits, and then they put it on an earthquake zone. You know, is it some kind of suicide bomber who wants to blow up the world? Well, maybe. Because they're doing a very, very good job. <laughs> yeah. You know, I mean, this could be it for us. It's that bad. Well, it's a serious wake-up call, and, and yet again, it's not being heeded. I mean, this isn't the Soviet Union. You know, this is Japan. They're yeah, supposed to be Japan. one of the great success It's stories. Canada. It's the US. It's the UK. I mean, the UK is so pro, it's all fine. They actually sent a cricket team into Fukushima to show that the... Because they said the background radiation is no higher than Cornwall. Yeah, and that brings us to another point, of course, the difference. This very um, in, in scientifically illiterate statements they make comparing particles of radiation to background radiation because background radiation isn't in your body but oh yeah ingesting radiation yeah. is far worse for you than background yeah. radiation and long-term exposure 
is much worse for you than short-term intense exposure. And this is what these children are getting in Fukushima. I mean, it makes you want to cry. Are There's a film particles? that's being made. Yeah. Well, because they're, they're being forced to eat food, yeah. irradiated food. I mean, the farmers are saying, we're being forced to grow this food and we sell this food, but we wouldn't eat it ourselves. And the decontamination in the rice fields is not taking off the area of topsoil, it's just digging it in. Yeah. So these so children. So we really are seeing, you know, a crime against humanity. It here, is, really. and it's the a Japanese dereliction of duty by people. the United Nations, the Japanese government, the WHO. It's criminal negligence, mm. and you've got collusion of not only the governments but the media. Yeah. You've got the media. I mean, the amount of people that I've tried to get to cover this story, and I'm reasonably well connected, and it's just blank, 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 blank. And what I do think they it's say? who isn't, you know who isn't part of the solution, is part of the problem. Yeah, of course, but when you go to sort of, you know... A well, TV there's kind of silence, you know. They there's just kind don't of get back to you. Well, yeah, you know, I've tried The Guardian, and I've got, you know, silence. I've talked to loads of people. I mean, I'm carrying on, obviously, because I think this is, you know, this is the end of the, this is the, end of the world. You know, and if anything goes wrong with this Pond 4, the end of the world's going to be kind of quite quick. Mm. You know, we're all going to be dead of cancer within 15 years, you know, it'll just be over. Forget, you know, our dreams of having grandchildren. I'm mm. contraindicating my kids right now, like, you know, maybe let's not go there. I mean, that's really frightening. Mm. But historically, you know, the effects, you know, the effects of atomic radiation have been completely non-reported, mm. non-monitored as well. I mean, what's happening in Japan is only 15% of the staff of TEPCO are actually TEPCO full-time staff yeah. with the insurance. Yeah. The rest of it, they're using homeless people. They're using homeless and And they're giving people. them until they've got the maximum amount that, you know, is sort of legal, if, you know, anything is legal over there or illegal. And then they're just kicking them out back to homelessness. And there's mm. no monitoring, there's no health checks, there's no health care, nothing. Yeah. But this has been going on since the Marshall Islands. I mean, the Marshall Islands. The Marshall they, Islands, what, what was that? That was the Bikini Atoll testing in the Bikini 50s. Bikini Atoll, that rings a bell, yeah. Yeah, and they got the huge plume of radiation. Um, it was very bad, they were evacuated, but um, they've been having, you know, they had jellyfish babies there. I mean, mm. it's like children born without bones. Birth defects are so horrific that the pediatricians can't believe that they're, you know, they can hardly mm. believe that they're human. I mean, families have decided to go extinct there because of the frequency and horrific nature of the birth defects. But you've got Chernobyl is mirroring the Marshall Islands, and now Fukushima is mirroring Chernobyl. But is the United States going to be mirroring Fukushima? You know, or are we going to be next? It is pretty, uh, I, I, for me, this is a sort of crisis of governance. Really. It is, it is. It's the final nail in the coffin, I think, of our political system. Something this terribly has failed wrong. us because what we forget is that we make contributions to the UN, mm. but these come from our taxes. Mm. You know, we pay, you know, the government of civil servants, you know, we pay everybody. This is our money. And this is what they're doing with it. I mean, I think this is the end now. I think we need to devolve rapidly into direct democracy, like they have in Switzerland, when everything is decided by referendum. Mm. And they actually have lower national debt. Yeah, I'm sure they do. And they also have more informed citizens, because mm. there's a status issue about knowing, you know, your stuff on the oncoming referendum, because people discuss it in bars and cafes. And yeah. so you have actually a better for informed electorate, more informed than legislators, in the UK or anywhere else. So we need to move on this fast because these guys are going to kill us. Yeah. You know, I mean, this is genocide. This is genocide on a global scale. Yeah. Although, to put the other side, you know, I think they would argue that they've um, well, they're doing they the raised best. the safe limits because they would, they'd always just set them too low. Well, there's um, no, you know, but they, they could say that. But if the IAEA itself says there's no safe limit, of radiation, you know, then to, to say there's a safe limit is you're just pretending. Yeah. You know, you're lying. But it's you're lying because it's not safe. I th I th We're I being lied I, to. Yeah, I think they'd say that below a certain level, you know, I mean, my brother's a health economist and he's always explaining how, you know, that you get very small risks which attract everybody's attention, even though they're quite small. These aren't risks. small risks, these are gigantic risks yeah. that they're taking. I mean, if you've already got, you know, 150 times 
the normal amount of child thoracic well, yes. cancer after two years. I don't think we've tickled yeah, all well, that I mean, small this, this dossier that and this you've got here is, this very, is very impressive, but worryingly impressive. You know, it affects you know, mental, it f physical growth and also mental growth, oh mental yeah. development. I mean, it is, you know, the thing with radioactivity is that it sterilizes, it attacks your reproductive system mm. and it's sterile, it, well, it, it leads to extinction. Just to get back to that, um, s that agreement between the World Health, or Health Organization and the um, nuclear establishment, I'm just wondering if this is a bit off topic here, but I'm just wondering if the reason that we they won't ever tell us anything about Fallujah in Iraq, where so many people are apparently dying now, and John Pilger's been there and he did a report. Oh, the birth there. defects there. Yeah, due to depleted uranium. Yep. I wonder if that's why the World Health Organization is refusing to take up that issue. Because it's not actually depleted uranium is not actually it's not radioactive. It's a toxin. It's a poison. But the but have you seen the pictures of the birth defects? I have, yeah, absolutely horrific, yeah. Well, you, you know, it's probably they just sweep it all into the same bag, you know, the buddies yeah. together. I mean, why, yeah. you know, this this agreement needs to be, what's the word for it? Torn up. Torn up, cancelled, annulled. Of course. Otherwise, why are we paying contributions to the UN? Well, why what are use are they to us? To the British government, for that matter. Yeah, but why? Are we, okay, fine. You know, ultimately. Because we're obliged. To well, you know, even if we had a direct democracy, we'd still be paying taxes, but we'd be voting on how that money mm. was spent. But if I was voting on how my money was spent right now, I wouldn't want any money going to the UN until this th agreement was torn up. So, Catherine, the thing I find most bewildering about this is really the behaviour of the Japanese. I mean, we've been discussing about the Middle Ages idea that you can burn. Things. I mean, th th without being too sort of culturally critical, is, is there something about the Japanese that, that makes them put up with this? I mean, I, you were mentioning how, the, you were telling me earlier how the Crown Prince has had the Fukushima well, rice, especially. Well, they, you know, where this is a PR op uh, operation, but first, first of all, they were discussing whether to evacuate him, which would have been sensible, because I think you should evacuate Tokyo. I mean, there's that Arnie Grunson video uh, who, He's uh, an American nuclear scientist. Arnie Gunderson, yeah, he's yeah, one of the key... He uh, went in and he took soil samples from Tokyo, um, shipped them back to America, declared them, had them tested in the United States, and results came back as dangerous um, radioactive nuclear waste should be removed and put in a safe deposit. And that was just an ordinary soil sample from Tokyo? Yeah, it was. In fact, some of the worst soil samples come from in front of the Ministry of Trade, who are the ones who are I responsible for TEPCO, which is kind of ironic. Right. But I mean, well, forget irony. There's not a lot of irony in this. I mean, the reality is that Tokyo should probably be evacuated, but the Crown Prince being such a kind of major icon, they were talking about evacuating, but obviously it was bad PR, and then they went the other way and s sent him rice from Fukushima. I just hope he didn't eat it, but there, it's very odd. I mean, I've worked in Japan for the last 30 years, and, you know, one side of it, they're the most wonderful people, but it is a bit like dealing in the 16th century, and there's a Japanese saying, the nail that banged up, that sticks up, is banged down, because up till, you know, the end of World War Two. I mean, they've only just been a democracy for a very short period of time. Yeah. Before that, the orders came down from on high and they were obeyed, was mm. you know, gone. And so they haven't developed their own way of being. They take authority and they just like, I mean, I was with a meeting with some Japanese people today and I'm just saying like, I'm devastated about what's happening, but they won't listen. No, they, they won't. Can't, uh, they can't, yeah, they, I've heard they, this. They can't evacuate because they lose their houses, they lose their jobs, they've got no money. And so they just, Blinkered well, if you and mention this in a cocktail party or, or, a, gr or a meeting, they it's will taken kind to of be run, extremely run away. Bad it's extraordinary. Yeah. It's extraordinary. And yet, the, you know, what's going to happen to, you know, the children of these people? Or you know, the children. You know, there was a r huge rash of selective of um, people, women having abortions after Fukushima because they were terrified that their children, you know, their fetuses would have birth defects, and that's. Mm you know, it's people know, but there's no record of it, so they know, but they're having to deal with it and having to carry on. I mean, they're noble, but this is stupid. Yeah, quite. This is really stupid. It's and I think the Olympics has got a lot to do with it, as well as... Uh, they don't kind want of to have the Olympics cancelled. Well, no, yeah, because the Olympics, they apparently only got the Olympics, uh, as opposed to Madrid, because they guaranteed to the Olympic Committee that, you know, it would all be fine. But there have been 
research now, people have been taking readings of the sites of the Olympic stadiums, and there's super high radiation, and they contacted the Olympic Committee, and apparently they weren't, you know, they just showed very little interest. Mm. But if you think, you know, I mean, that's a hell of a responsibility, not just for athletes who spent all their lives getting to this extraordinary point of physical perfection. Mm. What about the spectators? Yeah. Yeah. You know, I mean, they should count. The Olympics should be cancelled now because there's no way the, that they're going to be able to decontaminate by yeah. 2020. They've admitted, you know, because Japan well, that, is mostly forest. And that's assuming forest. nothing doesn't get worse. I mean, we've still got this huge problem. Of oh, getting the, rid pond of the, fuel four, the pond four. The pond four. I mean, the pond four. I mean, Arnie Gunderson said it's like if they're extracting these fuel rods one by one, and if they touch, the whole thing goes, mm. and it's like 89 times Chernobyl. It basically takes out the northern hemisphere. Mm. Yeah. Well, uh, thanks very much, Catherine. That's um, all quite a worry, and it's interesting. That at least there's somebody out there campaigning energetically. Well, there are loads of people campaigning. Thank you very much for having me. Well, that's it for this program, and we'll be back again in a week. Thanks very much to the People's Voice for screening us, and thank you for watching. <laughs>